Well, welcome back to this time, an episode of Lifestyle Debunk here at Hippocrates Health Institute. I am joined by Dr. Brian Clement, and we are here to talk about vaping this episode. Mm. Now, this has been a hot topic for a long time. Literally it's, hot. Literally, <laughs> literally hot. It's come back in um, with a few health concerns from the recent years, and we're going to talk about that more. So, to start off, you know, I think it's good to point out that. In the past few years, you know, high school and middle school students, actually 2.1 million had been reported to be um, consuming, taking the uh, vaping e-cigarettes back in 2017. Well, that number, number continued to jump, and in 2018, that number went up to 3.6 million. So the trend continues to rise, and so not only in adults, but we're seeing this happening in children too. So I think it's important to discuss today. Well, it is. You know, it's pretty frightening to me that uh, cigarettes finally were condemned. The Surgeon General had the ability a few decades ago to tell us that this is killing us. Uh, when I was a young guy and I smoked cigarettes, I used to smoke three packs a day. I started with camels. They had no filters and lucky strikes. And I was actually doing it for the same reason a lot of these young people are. It made me feel like a man. It made me feel in control of my life. I thought I was sexy, believe it or not. Uh, can you imagine the way you smell and you think that's sexy? But now they made it tasty because everyone's addicted, as we know today, to sugar. Mm, and so point. taste and yep. we all are having hyper palatability, as the former Surgeon General, mm -hmm. Dr. Kessler said. And so they realize this is a way to hook kids. Now, the frightening news is the last data came out from 218, but I've just read uh, in Wall Street Journal about a month ago that we're up now to over 40% of the high school seniors literally admitting that they vaped. Now, that's wow. pretty frightening. So electronic, you know, we're so hooked on technology today, somehow they think electronic cigarettes are fine. This is insane. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about the toxicity. Now, there are 22 known toxic substances that regularly occur in e-cigarettes. And, you know, okay, to be granted, they said there's more in regular cigarettes, yeah. but that doesn't mean that they don't exist. I mean, 22 is still a pretty great number, right? Well, you bet. Well, let's forget there's 22 and that's less than normal cigarettes. They put saltpeter in there mm. so that boys who have high testosterone levels are less likely to want to... Uh, be sexually active. And they've oh. been doing that since the Second World War. By the way, how they got most Americans hooked on it, they gave free cigarettes, the cigarette industry, to every single soldier. Mm. And the poor guys were under stress. They're giving you now vapor. And here's the problem. These cigarettes, e-cigarettes, have the same nicotine in it. We haven't eliminated the nicotine. There's t approximately 22 chemicals plus the nicotine. Wow. So what's the difference? The difference is you're going to die with class at this point. Before mm. you just died stinky from cigarettes. Well, now we're classy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we're gonna talk a little bit now about some of the actual chemicals that are in these e-cigarettes, what they're used for outside of e-cigarettes, and we're gonna go from there. So, aside from nicotine, um, we have propylene glycol. <laughs> and what that is, is actually, a lot of times it's used as a de-icing agent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually taking ice <laughs> off a windshield with something I'm giving a kid. Mm -hmm. These people should be arrested. <laughs> this is outrageous insanity. <laughs> you might as well. Now, if, think of this. Just think of what I'm saying. Those of you who have taken these e-cigarettes, can you imagine if I took a child and you were watching and opened their mouth and put a defrosting agent down their throat. Would I be arrested? I should be. Mm. And if I went to court, I would lose. But you're doing this to make money. At what cost? The life and future, the life of the individual and future of humanity. Wow. And so we have another, um, we have another chemical substance here. This one was said to be lethal in uh, mice and rats. And now, Obviously, we don't like animal studies here at Hippocrates Health Institute. We, we have a long history of knowing what works for humans and what doesn't work for humans. Right. But for something to be deemed as lethal for tests of this nature, I mean, that says a lot. And it says also that it was toxic um, in cultured human leukocytes. 
Oh, this is frightening. So let me talk about what this all means. A lot of you say, well, you know, I'm going to vape anyway, although they're saying they have these chemicals, because they tell me it's perfectly safe. When you look at mammal studies, when you look at mice, you look at rats, very similar. The DNA and RNA of these animals are very similar to yours. So when we say that it's causing death, demise, this is not a joke. This is also something that they put in some forms of rat and mice poisoning. Mm. Now, worse than that is think about the second thing that we're discussing here. When you look at the toxic level that this has in it, that it changes the white blood cell, a leukocyte means in English white blood cell. Mm. This is your immune system. And so you're literally going to weaken your immune system and every virus that comes along, every bacteria, mm -hmm. every cancer cell that comes along, you will be a candidate to much, much higher levels get this disorder. Wow, that's, I mean, that's a powerful statement. Um, so as we continue to move on here, so we have another chemical here, um, and this one is actually found in foods such as seeds, nuts, and meats. So though it was coming from originally a more natural source, now we have a synthetic source that is producing this chemical that is now being put into um, the e-cigarettes. What do you think about synthetics that are made um, based off organic compounds. Well, it's very similar to the work that I did on supplementation, and that's what they did with over 90% of supplements. But let me emphasize that the nuts and seeds that they tested were roasted. Mm. So the mutation of the proteins within them, and more so meat, as we know, these are all carcinogens, known carcinogens. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that they put in for the nutty flavor, you know, the rich, as we call it, the rich flavor. Right. You know, when I used to smoke cigarettes, when we finally got the filters on, they actually tried a little bit of this. It didn't work so well, though. They put flavors like chocolate cigarettes mm. and nut flavor cigarettes, and this is what they're trying to get at with your health. This is insanity! <laughs> So now you can have uh, sugar flavors, the fat flavors. They're just trying to satiate us in all these different ways, uh, uh, right? Is it, is it, Alexa, is this sexy to young people to have an electronic cigarette? Hey, baby, look at his electronic cigarette. He's, he's got a big one. Whoa! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next uh, substance we have here is called ethyl vanillin. Oh. And, you know, this one is something that is used a lot in flavorings. It's, um, I believe you even mentioned it's used in ice cream sometimes as oh, a flavoring. Yeah. But once again, uh, it is very toxic and it is also extremely synthetic. Now, this is a, a synthetic form of vanilla. You know, vanilla beans can be very costly if you're a big producer of ice cream right. or other cookies, whatever it may be. So this came out many, many generations ago. And what it does is widely destroy the red blood cell activity of the body mm. and starts to uh, disassemble proteins in the system. Okay. Now you're made of proteins. When we look at our skin, when we look at our bones, our hair, that's protein based. So you never want to do this. We don't even know the results of this, but it can't be good. <laughs> well said. So the last chemical we're going to hit on here is one that you may have heard before. Now, just to get a little bit of background on it, um, it's been found that in the lining of the airways, it causes a lot of damage as it's inhaled. And what they've also found is it, it strongly implicates protein damage in those airways kind of like what we were saying before, and it can, as opposed to animal studies, it can go much deeper in the lungs of humans than it can in actually other mammals. So what some people may have heard of, and this is what is caused for popcorn lung, and that's something that has come up in the past few years, and um, it's, you know, it's been known, it's been known to happen with vaping in particular, and has uh, sent many people into chronic illness. Well, I guess you get popcorn lung if you go to the movies. I'm not sure about how insane this is. So let's explain what this really means. Uh, why they call it popcorn lung is when you look inside of the lung with a scan, it actually looks like uneven tissue mass, almost cystic or fibroid cystic concerns. Mm -hmm. Now, why that happens is that your cells are made of amino acid proteins. Mm -hmm. And when they all are working the way they should and there's enough of these, you literally have a smooth tissue inside of the lungs. Now remember, the lungs regenerate every 70 days. So you have a brand new set of lungs every 70 days. Now that doesn't mean if you have lung cancer, or COPD, or popcorn lung, it's gonna go away. It's gonna take 
the remissing of this elimination of taking these type of heavy uh, chemicals as well as popcorn as you pointed out in factories they discovered mm -hmm. this why they call it pap popcorn lung but how about the poor boy who's in high school or the girl who's working at the movie theater behind the popcorn machine yeah and that oil that's mm -hmm. coming out that's what it's made of there so we really don't want anything like this this is setting you up for future lung cancer uh, for a wide array of asthmatic conditions mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned COPD and you don't want to reduce oxygen as we knew with the recent uh, COVID-19 uh, people who had small respiration not enough oxygen they were the ones that died that's why older people a medium age in some places were 80 years old 82 years old of who died from this it was because of lack of oxygen mm -hmm. so not only are you getting lack of oxygen by inhaling these deadly chemicals with what in it with nicotine in it mm -hmm. and caffeine in it but you're also now putting chemicals in that further reduce the oxygen and impair permanently i would imagine the tissue mass creating scar tissue of the lung yeah and that's a great point point. and yeah this this whole thing was actually found when um people went to the lungs of people who worked in the popcorn industry in the popcorn factories and how they actually um by breathing in this chemical with this synthetic buttery flavor that's like what the chemical does is produce that buttery richness um, that that's what was causing this to happen and it was causing the tumors and things like that that you were explaining so what's really interesting is that you know that this condition um, is really a part of what makes these e-cigarettes so harmful and um, and I think it's, it's really interesting how so often, you know, we take in the oil, we take in the butter, we take in the sweet, and we're just trying to satiate those needs um, through the e-cigarettes for many people. Oh, this is really, it's disheartening to me. It took many, many generations and a war uh, that was won by conscious attorneys. We finally battled the liars, the presidents of the large cigarette companies, uh, they actually said there's no studies that show this creates cancer and uh, early death. Uh, this was completely lie. We brought them down. As a matter of fact, Montgomery, who was a colleague and a friend of mine, uh, God bless him, he's gone now, was really the man that had the courage and the ability and the intelligence to do it. And without him, we would be in a different world. Mm -hmm. Now we have this new disaster emerging among us. And we've got to put a stop to these things. Addiction's addiction, and why you're addicted is because you're not a happy camper. Become a happy camper! <laughs> well said. So another reason why we bring this topic up for this discussion today is because the scene of vaping has been changing. So in the recent years, we have um, heard instances coming up of people actually vaping essential oils and vitamins, surprisingly. So Brian, have you heard about this? What are your thoughts? Well, you know, everything under the sun that's healthy, I at least test or I research and we utilize here under clinical work with our guests who come to Hippocrates after we've tested it ourselves. So a few years ago, I tested uh, CBD uh, in a vaporizing form. Now, to me, I didn't really find much of a benefit. And shortly after I started that, I realized that when you heat anything above 115 degrees, including this oil, it becomes a carcinogen. And when, in the case we're talking about here, all of these herbs actually are carbohydrate based. And when you heat them into a high temperature, they become acrylamides. Acrylamides are known carcinogens. This isn't an opinion. This is the best of science today. Uh, when it's tried to be denounced by many organizations, uh, it came back and reared its head and said, no, this is true. Carbohydrates that are heated at high temperatures should become carcinogens. The other thing I may say to you, that the vitamins, quote, that they put into these are synthetic. Right. They're not natural food. And yeah. if they were, by the way, uh, literally they die if you heated them up. Right. That's a great point. So in terms of um, vitamins and nutrients that actually are put into a more vaporized form, what do we have that's available on the market today that may actually be healthier for people? Well, we've been doing it here in our medical department for a number of years. And so when we have people with lung problems who aren't doing this recreationally, but actually doing it because they want to gain their health. So we have people with lung problems, restroom problems. We actually take glutathione, a superstar 
among antioxidants. Mm -hmm. And we even vaporize it, put it into the lungs, and we've seen miraculous things happen. Uh, when the people go back home to their physicians, physicians say it usually takes years for this level of recovery that happened in one or two months. Uh, there are other things that we can actually vaporize. Right now at the Institute, we're in the middle of an experiment. We're taking stem cells. I'm doing this myself right now. Wow. I'm inhaling my own stem cells. Mm. And this was work that was done over a 20-year period with different people. And we're finding that it doesn't only help the lungs, but it enters in through the lungs, goes systemically throughout the body, and the stem cell, as you know, rebuilds any broken or weakened part of the anatomy of the human being. Wow, that's fascinating. And so when it comes to, this is not just vaporizing, this is also called, called nebulizing, Nebulizing, right? yes. Okay, and so does that mean that the, the heating process of it is happening at a lower temperature? Much lower, so it's actually 98 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, you know, something like 30 some degrees. And this is a healthy thing, but what we talked about earlier, and I'm so happy we're discussing this today, is a grievous, it's criminal. Uh, when we are allowing our children, and we have forgotten to talk about how many mid-age kids are doing this. Right. Middle school kids are doing this. It's become popular. And a naive parent who doesn't know any better, who's probably addicted themselves to something, mm -hmm. are allowing this to happen. Oh, it's safe. The doctor, it's a what doctor? The doctor on the payroll of the damn companies that make these vapors. <laughs> You guys are, you believe that nonsense. Stop believing it. The expert, as soon as they're an expert, look behind them. What payroll are these bums on? That's what you should be doing. That's, that's a great point. And so I think we can qualify uh, vaping as debunked. Would you agree? Debunked, defunct, and funky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode here of Lifestyle Debunk. We'll be back next week with another episode of something relevant and fascinating. And we look forward to seeing you soon on HHI TV. And let me talk. <laughs>